Um, thank you, and uh, thank you for joining this panel. And I really appreciate uh, the initiative uh, which was supported by the uh, Society Integration Foundation to have economic dimension to this radar and to this discussion about social cohesion. Uh, because uh, from a rational theory, of course, we can discuss identity, we can discuss social belonging, but at the end of the day, you need to eat something. So let's talk about money. Um, and, uh, but before that, um, Klaus uh, at the, the beginning asked the question, is there any issue which in Latvia in terms of, uh, of, of an, uh, uh, cohesion is something that there is too much, if I correctly rephrase your question. And I think there is one thing which is too much in Latvia, and that is that we always want to be compared with Estonia. <laughs> And I think what Martin showed is a different story from a consensus that Estonians are always better. Because if we can go back to the slide, number three, uh, yes, this one. So here you can see Latvia, which before the correction was higher than, than Estonia. But Estonia now is the first one, but in a bad way that the equality is even larger in Estonia than in Latvia. So relatively, we are better than Estonians. So thank you, Martin, for that point. I didn't know about this national characteristics. I didn't know that comparisons to Estonia are so important in Latvia, but now I will remember it and I will try to bring more positive surprises that someone other is worse in the future. Thank you. But um, that, that is also my first question, because in this graph, after the corrections, what we see that in many countries in Central Eastern Europe, the inequality is even larger than in the, the Western European countries. And as you said in your presentation as well, the inequality started to increase in West starting from 70s, 80s. We started in 90s, in somehow like from the very, very bottom, but we managed not even to catch, but overcome many of Western countries. So how come that this issue has been left unaddressed uh, for so many years? Okay, that's a very important question because uh, the economic inequality indeed increased significantly. However, as far as I know, as far as I look on the politics in Poland, the income inequality is not a topic for the politicians. And uh, there is an interesting research on the demand uh, for the redistribution across the European Union. There is a lot of research on the views of Europeans on the distribution of income and distribution of wealth. And it seems that uh, citizens of Central and Eastern Europe are ready to accept the higher degree of economic inequality than in the Western Europe. Maybe it, has, it is a part of post-communist heritage, so we lived during communist time, we remember the socialist economy, and we do not like the concept of redistribution. So I think uh, this is a bit worrying. However, it is also, in some strange way, an example of the working democracy. So the pol politicians see that demand for the redistribution, that demand for the more progressive tax policy, because the degree of the progressivity of tax systems, so the degree of the redistribution of income from the richest to the poorest in our region of Europe is also lower than in the w Western Europe. So politicians see that there is lower demand for the redistribution that economic inequality is not so important for citizens in this uh, part of the continent, and they do not act. Mm -hmm. Okay. We don't have any politician here on a panel, but uh, we do invite uh, an entrepreneur 
to see also a position from somebody who's uh, both as an entrepreneur and also an educator. And uh, Martin also mentioned that uh, in the, 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 the more recent years, the inequality has decreased thanks to these benefits which were paid out during COVID and also now because of our energy crisis. And this is one thing which we usually but not always, of course, hear from entrepreneurs that benefits are not good for welfare state because for, for many reasons. Uh, Baiba, what is your look at this as an entrepreneur? Um, yeah, I have uh, dual feelings from, uh, I mean, if you, if you look for the household perspective, it's always a good feeling that you are being supported. At the same time, you know, there is a concept of the cargo cult, like, um, which is like you just expect to be saved. And uh, I mean, uh, I will speak now more about uh, how I look at it as an entrepreneur. And, and basically, uh, the influence is that uh, you get, I mean, the crisis, which was both COVID and, and, and also now the energy pricing. Crisis is, all, of course, a problem, but it's also opportunity because, I mean, you are really pushed. You are in the corner. You need to find new ideas, new solutions, maybe totally change the model you operate as a businessman. So, so um, I, would, I would more look for maybe, uh, again, speak about not giving the fish, but teach how to fish, like giving, provide, provide the net. And uh, I guess uh, maybe even more important would be to, to lessen the, some burdens, which I mean, like, like bureaucracy or, or all kinds of compliance stuff, which is especially hard for smaller and medium-sized uh, entrepreneurs, because I mean, you just need, to, I mean, how, how, uh, how do you use your resource, which is, uh, uh, it's, it's limited and, and time and it ends up again in the money, right? So, so uh, I would, uh, yeah, I'm not a big fan. I mean, uh, we need to support, but uh, I guess maybe consider more, not just um, like uh, giving the money, but more thinking also on the infrastructures, on, on, on access also to education, also to, to network support like by network and, 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 and this kind of uh, direction, yes. So less benefits, more public services. In a way, I could agree to this. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, this networking opportunities, which was mentioned in like various uh, aspects in, in previous discussions, is, is super important because one thing is just, you know, emotional support. Other is also a uh, possibility to, to exchange the ideas and experiences and just to see that there uh, is a possibility for success, right? And, and, but uh, it's a two-way street, like we are giving you something, but you need to put your energy in it uh, to, to get to some result. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, one thing, of course, which is also quite remarkable in Latvia, and not so much in other Central European com uh, uh, countries compared to Latvia is a shadow economy, of course, which affects the, uh, the, the income uh, equality as well. And, and, and you, Ludmila, has a paper with um, Konstantin Benkowskis, which takes into account the, the, the shadow economy and the wages in the envelope. And surprisingly, you find that if you take into account that aspect, then the income inequality is not as large as the official number says, which in a way goes uh, in, 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 in opposite direction, which, which Martin uh, showed that uh, there is a greater inequality. So how would you put these two, two, two studies together? Okay, thank you very much, so first of all, for inviting me here. The Central Bank of Latvia does a lot of research recently on income and net wealth inequality, and part of the data which was used by Martin is actually Central Bank is paying for getting this data for Latvia, and it's a lot of money. So, um, okay, thanks for, uh, for the question. Um, there are many aspects I wanted to touch. Uh, First of all, okay, if we refer just to, to the uh, shadow economy, of course, um, it affects the official level of uh, income uh, people are receiving. Therefore, the numbers, if we estimate them, 
uh, just looking at the wage income inequality would be four points uh, lower. But uh, uh, when we talk about country perspective, this wage income is not as important as the overall income inequality. And uh, the main, um, and it, it, is, it will stay quite high anyway because the group which is mostly affected in Latvia is the pensioners, and especially lonely pensioners, their income is very low. And uh, if we're comparing those different uh, groups which are very uh, at, at risk, let's say, uh, then in case of uh, Poland, um, pensioners, uh, they are like, they are very much where the rest of society is. And in Latvia, Estonia, and Lithuania, and in Estonia especially, uh, those groups are very much at risk. I wanted to touch to other thing which um, was striking for me when I looked at the numbers of Poland. What we see, we see that income inequality overall through 20 years was declining. And in case of Latvia, it was uh, not so. And one of the reasons why it is uh, not so, it's because uh, if we look at the uh, demographic pyramid uh, for Latvia, it's very much different. So we have very uh, large ropes for people who are like 40 years old, those and, um, and small kids also. So many people left and um, therefore this base for the taxation is uh, relatively low. And in Poland, for example, they can spend around, uh, so they can spend larger percentage of their budget of the, of the total GDP on uh, so different uh, social activities and support. In Latvia, we just don't have this uh, basis, which again goes together with the shadow economy uh, story that we could have a bit more and then we could redistribute better. And this redistribution aspect in Latvia is also very limited, so we have only very tiny share of our uh, social uh, spendings used for this uh, redistribution of income, let's say, which I mean that this is redistribution connected to the income level of people. So we just redistribute lump sum uh, many things, but uh, not uh, based on the income level uh, much. So if I can come back to, to Bible's suggestion that we, could, um, we should more invest in public infrastructure, you would say that this is much harder than in Poland because to build, for instance, fast trail from Riga to Daugavpils, there is less people who would contribute with their taxes to that thing uh, than, than in Poland to build a new track from, uh, from Krakow to Warsaw. Okay, it's hard to say, <laughs> but uh, what I would definitely uh, say is that immigration for Latvia, it's, it, we should view it as a very positive thing and we should strike toward more immigration uh, to Latvia because I think in, in uh, long term, and again, if we look in the future for our pension funds, uh, those of, of my age, we know already that the share of, uh, so our pensions comparing to the uh, pension, which, uh, so just the share of income, which we would get comparing to people what are uh, getting pensions now, would be much lower. And therefore everyone should think about their future savings. And this is again due to uh, n not having enough people uh, who would uh, who would support. Therefore, immigration, uh, like Martin um, highlighted, uh, this part of negative, um, pos like negative factors of immigration, the the effect on the economy. I would say that for Latvia, it's uh, positive, and we should really do something with allowing people to come. So let me rephrase it. So you believe that there is a connection between. Uh, uh, more flexible immigration policy and uh, uh, possibilities to decrease economic inequality? Yes, I strongly believe, believe so, but uh, I wouldn't say that this is a view <laughs> of Central Bank of Latvia, but it's my personal opinion. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> if I may hear a, small, a short remark, uh, I guess uh, we all have to accept that the world is not linear anymore. So to fix some problem, we really need to use like a lot of uh, uh, yeah, 
things just which can might be migration together with uh, also like some visions like I mean I, I really lack the vision where do we want to go as a state as, uh, as like economic entity as a, a social entity like in, in all those kinds of aspects because also uh, if we speak on, on shadow economy basically people okay you just have to be a good citizen and pay taxes this is one way to look at it another way is I mean why uh, previously it was mentioned people look for meaningful jobs we look for meaningful lives so so we have some common goal we like not all but maybe at least the majority believe in mm -hmm. so maybe I would like to add that short statement uh, on the immigration my goal was not to assess the impact uh, of the immigration on the economy and the society as a whole I want, uh, my goal was to address the impact of the income distribution. So I think generally the impact of the immigration on the economy is positive, especially in the economies of Central and Eastern Europe, where population aging is very, very fast. So we need uh, more migrants to safeguard the future pensions and future income of pensioners. However, in the short term, we can see that uh, Increasing share of poor people are not a native population and politicians ignore their problems. So that's the challenge for the society. And immigration, as many things, has positive and negative impacts. So it, it may slightly uh, increase income inequality. However, on the other hand, still brings many other positive benefits. Mm. Yeah, yeah, of course. Economic issue is just one which uh, uh, influences uh, migration processes. But, but to touch on that, what you just said about uh, meaningful life and uh, uh, personality. So you, you, on your daily basis, next as an entrepreneur, you also uh, work with entrepreneurs to, to develop their leadership skills. So what is that makes people successful in, 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 in Latvia? How do you see that working with, uh, with uh, those who want to succeed or who have succeeded? What is the, the secret? Um, uh, I would say the basis is the way we think. And it's more about who, I mean, and, and, and lately when we all have access to information. Also, for instance, I don't know, artificial intelligence uh, tools as, uh, as uh, assistance is available to all of us. It's not m m so much about what you know, but how you think and how you look at the world. And uh, I guess the key success, success is really the belief that I can change, I can learn, and, and it's not like, you know, it's not for me, I, I, I'm not this type of person or whatever. Because, you know, we speak uh, a lot about those bubbles we live in uh, nowadays, and, and, and very often we speak on them as something bad. But there is also, I mean, there could be also positive bubbles, and, and, and if, I, uh, if I speak about about the company uh, I'm, I'm uh, representing now here, we have this uh, bubble of entrepreneurs who are investing in developing their employees and their skills and their knowledge and stuff. And we see that they are successful and they are successful and they continue to invest in, in, in the development. So this, that I mean, ability and openness to new knowledge, to new, new skills, I would say this is, uh, this is the key because um, we were discussing a lot that, you know, people for, from regions, from maybe poor families, they have different opportunities. In some way, it might be true, but if they have access to some positive network, be it teachers or be it any NGOs or anything that they are encouraged and they are also showed by example that this is, this is possible. I guess this gross mindset and, and uh, yeah, openness and also like positive attitude, not in the way that oh, everything is so well and I don't see any, any troubles. It's not like that. It's more about, okay, you can fall, but you can, you can stand up and, and, and that uh, like um, difficult situations and, and falling, maybe it's, it's always an opportunity, as I said also about crisis. The question is again, the, the support network. Okay, but then 
I'm interested also, how would you explain this, this example which uh, Klaus mentioned about the student who said that uh, she is not uh, taking part in any activities for civic society. She leaves it for more because she's not as smart as, as those who are doing this. So, so is there a lack of uh, education system at the very bottom or there is some kind of a, uh, structural problems in our society that success is something which we believe is not for, for us? It's for Estonians. <laughs> You know, I very much believe in the butterfly effect, and I very much believe that uh, it's, uh, um, we are, I mean, if we see some good example, like for some teacher has done something good or, or something, we wanna um, like introduce it everywhere, like, you know, and from one side, this is a good thing, but from other side, I mean, you can't duplicate, like myself or yourself or any of us on, on the stage, we are all different. So I guess we should uh, speak more on those good examples and just encourage people to take some steps. And also, um, example about the student who is not smart enough or something. I mean, we are, we are everyone is different and, and we have like different skills and, and you know how to show that you can be successful based on different factors. Not only, I mean, one is, uh, one is mind and maybe I'm a mathematician or, or, or scientist or whoever, then I can be an artist or I can be a dance, uh, whoever, right? So, so, or I can make a good soup and I can feed people. So it's, um, you know, we love to live too much in our minds, but we are, you know, we are, we have also body and we have other qualities. So, so um, uh, one of uh, the colleagues from other um, discussion mentioned that I very much believe also in the power of storytelling. Mm -hmm. Emotions, emotions, they help us all understand better and, 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 and maybe really encourage us to do more. Okay, so you believe in the, in in, in uh, personality and very much so, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. But let's then go to data and see whether that really uh, is what happening in Latvia. So Ludmila, you have also done studies uh, on uh, on 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 more general level to see is there any issues like gender. Um, your, your educational background. So, for instance, I'm the fourth child in the family, and according to economic theory, I should have been left with the least resources for my education, and I, this should be my eldest brother who would sit here instead of me, and it hasn't happened. So, I, am I exception, a consequence, or what? Okay, I can mention two studies which ta touch upon uh, your question. So, uh, first of all, what we see and what's the difference of this Eastern European region comparing to the Western European region is this uh, level of uh, education in general for the... So, people who had their education during the Soviet times, uh, they are lacking now in their opportunities to find jobs. So, so this uh, younger generation right now, they have these options. To, to find a, uh, like, so they feel more secure, and I think in general they have higher chances uh, to get the empl uh, to get employed and to also compete uh, successfully, very successfully, with uh, the same uh, people around their age on like uh, European European level. This is like part of this inequality story that those, uh, uh, let's say. If, uh, like person 50 plus uh, from Western Europe, they, they feel themselves freer, they could m move easier because it's uh, knowledge of language, knowledge of di uh, digital skills and stuff. Therefore, uh, I wouldn't say that uh, for older uh, kids right now, it's like there are <laughs> some restrictions. It, uh, not for older, sorry, for younger son, there could be any restrictions, but uh, it's just that if, if you, the, uh, where the restrictions can come from, and this is the second uh, uh, story which uh, we also investigated, is this intergenerational mobility of uh, uh, wealth and in general the opportunities and uh, the ability to earn higher, higher wage. And what we see that around, um, so if, if we say that uh, uh, some, uh, so if we look at the income uh, inequality, can, 
kind of big share of it is explained of your background. It's explained, uh, and the main factor which explains it is the education of your parents. So education of your, of your parents also shows the probably the like. The, the things you've seen in life, the things, the topics you've been exposed to, to in life, the opportunities to travel, opportunities to learn to learn something, and it's also probably connected to this financial situation of the family, and this financial situation of the family never shows up as the main factor. But this education of the parents, this is super uh, important. However, I think they are correlated, and uh, just those two factors are super important. And this is what's different from our region, like Baltic countries, comparing to the, let's say, uh, Slovakia, Czech Republic, or Austria. In our case, this gender question is uh, not not so important. So for them, actually, if you are a woman. And you have much lower chances to get a nice paid uh, job there just because of uh, inherited. Um, so we have something good also come from the Soviet system, the opportunity for women to work and uh, to have a better child care, and which is relatively cheaper if we're comparing to, to other countries. But there's still a, still a pay gap between gender Yes, the pay, the, the, the pay gap is uh, quite large in in our region. It's not uh, Estonia has the largest one, <laughs> so so again we can be slight happy about that. But uh, in in general, uh, okay, if I can speak two two more things um, about that. So what we see we see that for women, uh, wages on in general for all professions are lower than for men. Uh, but if we took the the same s s structure. So for men, what, what the difference is that they both work in sectors where there are very high wages and in sectors where there are very low wages. And just on average, this um, like level is higher. However, uh, what we also see that women, they found their places. So they located, they locate themselves very strategically working in those jobs which are on relatively Okay, because if women work the same jobs than men with the same gap, then uh, it would be much, uh, the situation would be much worse. So women, they do this optimization in their head, calculating. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so, and now let's go back to Poland, uh, Martin. Um, we've seen just elections. Uh, we still don't know what's going to be the new government. We might thing that we know, but who knows what happens in politics. But what we saw in the past, that the, the, the previously ruling party uh, implemented much of such uh, welfare policies which decreased the poverty and the inequality. Uh, it wasn't the only country in the world which turned to these uh, policies which are uh, in many cases uh, referred as populistic. We could see that in Latin America, but what we could see as a side effect is that in Latin America, there was a complete collapse of uh, economy. Why this didn't happen in Poland and uh, how to implement welfare states and at the same time not to harm the economy? Uh, that's a great question. I think that the most important difference between, between the populism in Latin America and populism in uh, Europe, not only in Poland, but also in Hungary, are the institutional constraints resulting from the European Union membership. So the, action, the, government, the actions which may be taken by governments in the EU are limited in comparison with countries which are not EU members. And in the case of populist government, it is a protection for citizens. In many cases, our populist government wanted to do more actions to restrict the independence of the Kurds, to increase their share of public media, etc. But they were blocked by the, by the European Union or by the United States. So that's the fact that some policies implemented during the law and justice uh, period were progressive and uh, that's a good question what will 
come next. Uh, it is too early to discuss this problem fully because the new government is not yet formed. It will be probably formed in December. There is no coalition agreement, but uh, I think that uh, the economic solidarity will not be a priority for the new government. So they might be more, more uh, again, like uh, turn back to 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 the the situation which was before uh, um, uh, this the, the, the. So as far as the politicians promise, uh, pr promise there will be not uh, counter actions. So according to Donald Tusk, all benefits introduced will be kept uh, in place. We will see. So it means that these populist uh, policies could remain as a, a mainstream policies at the end. So it depends how we define populism. I think that the term populism mainly refers to the actions against the democratic uh, rules in the society, not to the redistribution. But uh, you are right that some uh, policies implemented by law and justice, which were seen as highly controversial in the beginning, like this family benefit, family five, uh, 500 plus, uh, which uh, civic platform and other political parties which will take government soon were very against it, now uh, as, are seen as a part of the consensus. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, this question, which you just also mentioned, the issue that uh, some of the policies you can't implement just because you are a part of a bigger structure, European Union, and the difference between Poland and Latvia is you have Zloty, we have Euros. And, and, and you, Ludmila, also have a paper with uh, Zeynep Kantur uh, saying that uh, uh, that is a constraint for the European Central Bank to address all the issues which are quite different for Germans, for Latvians, for Greeks. What can we then at the end do here locally if a lot of things are decided either in Brussels or in Frankfurt? Okay, I will explain a bit <laughs> what Andres is referring to. So the main uh, conclusion of uh, the paper, we were looking at the different uh, gener uh, generations of uh, people and how monetary policy can affect the uh, economy based on this the demographic structure of people and their accumulation of wealth over the time. And what we've shown is that if uh, economy is older, or if, uh, so if economy is older, then this monetary policy uh, instruments, such as uh, raise in the interest rate, uh, won't affect the economy uh, much because uh, there are like sh a lower share of, of younger people. Um, and what we also show is that part of this inequality story, uh, why, why we could uh, generate higher wealth. Uh, so if we look, uh, for example, on Western European countries and Eastern European countries, we see the accumulation of wealth in very different groups. So in Western European countries, this is all the population. So they accumulate the highest, uh, the highest percentage of uh, wealth. In the case of Eastern Europe, it's usually people 40 plus. 40, 50, uh, 40 year, uh, 50 years old, those who have this largest uh, share of uh, net wealth in, in the country, in the economy, because again, they had their education, they had the opportunities, and so they, they could accumulate uh, more. And uh, the question um, Andres is uh, asking is that, okay, interest rate is one instrument, but then uh, traditionally in the central banks, you could also somehow use the exchange rate and f of course since we are part of European Union central banks cannot use this instrument in, uh, anymore because it's the uh, it's the uh, ECB's uh, priority uh, pr prerogative now and uh, what what other instruments are available for changing this inequality so mostly it's a f it's fiscal policy and mostly it's a redistribution the problem is that we have limited resources uh, for that right now so uh, you, you mean basically taxes is what we can do? Uh, no, I, w I wouldn't say that we... Uh, okay, it's, 
I'm not suggesting that we need to raise taxes. So I'm not saying that. Uh, I'm just saying that potentially we need to look more into redistribution of the, of the taxes we gather because uh, giving money to everyone, it's, and, and again, as uh, I mentioned, it's not clear where we're going as a country, whether we want to become more uh, like business oriented or like social because two things cannot work at once and politicians they want to, uh, to somehow to solve two things at the same time therefore they don't want to raise taxes but they want higher redistribution with limited financial uh, fiscal base and it's very hard to do but in general of course we have uh, uh, limited resources and uh, what's important that we are uh, coming into economy of uh, services not so much of production therefore uh, I mentioned the immigration yes it's important but at the same time we need to uh, promote real education in our country and ne we need to promote innovation and we don't need so many people who just can do some basic jobs. We need to have uh, people who can innovate and uh, we need to invest more um, in our resources also like human resources in order to produce uh, those um, ideas and also to then to get those taxes which we can redistribute uh, and when we redistribute taxes we need to look uh, really into whom we're giving this money and try to be strategic on uh, which problems we're trying to solve not just to give money to uh, it's again it's a political decision who we want to be but then uh, really decide what kind so of country we are. So that would mean are. to support more uh, younger people who are still in the job market and who are um, just uh, in the education uh, but of course you have that problem which you mentioned before that the poorest citizens of Latvia are 65 plus so there is a trade-off between these two groups and so that's kind of like what politicians need to think whether they invest in in the welfare of uh, current population or the welfare of the future generations right yeah, but it can be dynamic, some dynamic approach can be used also with uh, current immigration, but then evolving mm. education I system, see. because education doesn't, uh, I mean, it takes time. Everything yeah, 20 takes time. years. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, and we need solutions now, right? Uh, and 20 years is also uh, for one award when you started to work at TV3, TV3 the channel, Latvijas Lapnums, uh, that was something which you started to show uh, cases where people are doing something. So what do you think, not from macroeconomic level, what we should do, but what should we do as every single individual to be Latvi's Lepnums? Um, yes, uh, Latvi's Lepnums or Pride of Latvia. Um, we start, I mean, my idea was really to show what the good impact of commercial media can be. And uh, I am very happy that I was on the roots of this project because it still lives and we celebrate how important uh, can be, like, you know, ordinary people and how big the butterfly effect can be uh, from them. And uh, answering this question, I want to comment one of the uh, comments which came in from Anonymous, that uh, the first comment was that we, are very, we have very different understanding on what success means. And uh, the other suggestion is that we focus too much on success, connected with leadership, power, money, and uh, the good uh, job, but it could be also, uh, you know, just helping others. And I'm totally with you that our definition of success is very different, and I very much see the possibility to define the, uh, what success means for me as one of the ways how I can be, like, you know, free person in an in inclusive society because what success means for me, maybe it means something for, I mean, something else for you. But my definition of success is really that I am able to manage, manage myself and to lead myself. Firstly, decide, decide what, what success means for me 
and go in this direction. And I guess the, the people we celebrate in, in Pride of Latvia is the very example of it, because they do various things, and it's not business, like in most cases, it's not. It's, it's more like, you know, encouragement and showcase that, I mean, the personality matters and, and they can just, you know, uh, help like hundreds or, or tens and, and then it spreads, uh, uh, sp spreads around. So, so I very much uh, believe that there should be more leaders with the clear idea, with uh, clear intention, uh, and, and just show that, that much can be done. And I, for instance, one of the uh, good examples, I guess, there is a center for, for use in, 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 uh, in troubling situations called Open, when there is a guy, Edis, I guess is his name, and he's very active in social media, and I guess this is the super good example how one person like coming also from very uh, troubling background with uh, with the addictions and stuff, and and you know it's it's a, it's a bubble. He speaks that it's I mean there is a problems, but we are addressing them, and this is also success and leadership and and in a good way. Mm -hmm. Thank you. At this point, then let's uh, um, ask audience to join us. Uh, if you saw any questions you would like to address from the screen, or if there are anybody in the audience who would like to ask question, please feel free to do so. Ludmilla, I can uh, just mention one um, to. Mentioned one thing. Okay, I mentioned pensioners, like a problem uh, problem group uh, we, for for whom it's very hard comparing to other groups of, of people. But of course, it's a family with uh, people with disability because there are some positive movements in, in Latvia right now with uh, trying to look at the how to provide better support for those families and how to uh, like, uh, in, increase those pensions uh, for the people. And I think this is the right direction. So so this group also very. Um, those those who who suffer, and um, I th I think in general politicians should listen more to people who are actually dealing with. So not to maybe not to come up with their own solutions, but actually talk more and ask uh, for people who are already solving some like NGOs. They're solving some problems and ask them for uh, direct policy uh, ideas, and th that would uh, help. Uh, to solve this, uh, also the income inequality for people with disability and how to involve them in the workforce more and um, what to do in this direction. Any questions from the audience? There was a question? Okay, yeah, please. Es uzdošu jautājumu latviski. Rasmu pīpiķi. Joprojām jautājums Olgai, um, kā ir no ekonomikas viedokļa mūsu demogrāfiskie dati ir vienkārši graujoši? Um, Kāda ir tie politikas? Es saprotu, ka banka nevar komentēt tā kā politiski, bet uh, vai mums kādā brīdī tomēr nebūs jāizšķirās par lielāku darba roku apjomu piesaisti Latvijai no trešām pasaules valstīm? Paldies! Uh, thanks. Um, can I answer in English? Yeah, okay. So the question was about uh, demographics, that there is a big um, problem with this demographic pyramid if we're looking at it, and uh, whether uh, the politicians should do something about it and maybe think about uh, immigration from the third countries to help uh, solve that. Uh, I agree with you on that. This is this is a big problem, and this is a problem which doesn't exist in Poland, for example. And um, anything which connected to, uh, but, uh, so so some national, very nationalistic parties they really want women to have more kids, but that won't happen if women have education. You know, you give education to women, then there will be less kids. Yes. <laughs> so there, there is a very clear uh, thing. And of course, immigration, I already mentioned that in uh, my um, answer, that 
I think that immigration, uh, we should look at it more and we should be very open to it and uh, we need to integrate those people coming to work in Latvia, like people from Ukraine, people from, um, let's say, Tajikistan or Uzbekistan, those, those who are coming to work here as the cleaners or uh, chefs, uh, those people, we need to be more open in providing courses, language courses also to provide them help, you know, where to go, what to do and how to uh, get all the help they can because we really need them and uh, we'll see that uh, uh, I think in the very future uh, that uh, without this immigration or without very like huge breakthrough in the IT in Latvia um, yeah we'll need to address it just a short know how comment I mean uh, my I mean I believe that we are now pretending that we, are, we don't have this type of immigration while we do. And exactly what you said, I mean, either we create infrastructure where those people, they can learn language, they can have, I don't know, local bodies just to understand how the society works and everything, or it happens just, I mean, it just happens. And then there is, the process is not managed and we are not sure how it's gonna, it's gonna end and it might end with radicalism or, or what have you. And, and I guess the smarter is just, you know, to, to realize what's the status now. And, and I'm not sure that in, in like uh, next few years there will be very welcome uh, politics uh, declared, but just to see what we have now. And, and there's, I mean, streets are full of bolt uh, deliverers, which are obviously not, uh, not local, but we don't speak about the, uh, how, how we, I mean, integrate them or, or how they can at least know, understand how the society works. Mm -hmm. So, talking about and, and finishing this discussion on the index, so one thing which uh, the index of social cohesion should measure should be also the, the quality of uh, public institutions that provide the, the services to uh, not even the evaluation only by the society, but also whether they are ready to challenge the, the, the thing, the, 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 all the uh, processes which uh, are coming here, right? Yeah. Any other suggestions for the index from economic inequality part which should be implemented? Martin? So maybe we can discuss <laughs> details after. I think generally the social cohesion report is focused on uh, ethnicity issues or the, in the participation in the civic life. So I read the summary in English. There is a part on economic solidarity. I think it can be developed further to include more direct measures. But here the question is what are the priorities of the organizers? On that note, I say thank you to all the panelists and I wish the best to develop the index.